Have you inherited a house that you'd like to sell, but you have a sibling or a loved one, family member that's living in the house, does not want to leave and does not want to sell? Well, that's what I'm talking about today. Stick around. Hi, I'm Annie Baker. I'm a realtor here in Silicon Valley. I specialize in selling homes. They're in trust and probate. Oftentimes they're inherited properties. And today I'm talking about not a great fun topic. Let's say you've inherited a property and you have at least one other sibling and you guys are both trustees of the estate. Maybe that sibling has been living in the house, possibly taking care of your parents or one of your parents towards the end of their life. This is common. And sometimes that sibling may not have had an outside job or a very minimal outside job. They've been living for free for years and they don't wanna leave now that your parent has passed away. They think, great, I can just keep living here for free, but you have a different plan. You need to sell that house. You have plans for your half of the equity. What do you do? Well, I have to be honest, I've been in this situation four times, different clients. The most I had were six siblings, six. One was living in the house, did not want to leave. It was a mess, but we got it done and we got it done peacefully. So I guess that's one of the first things I always talk about is kill someone with kindness. That's the first step. Do not come at them drawing hard lines in the sand. You may have a lot of triggers with this sibling. Um, and now that your parent has passed, they're really surfacing that now you feel like you can unleash. Don't do it. It's just not worth it. And the most important thing is keeping your end goal in mind. And how do we get there? So again, let's start off with some kindness. Number one, you could say, Hey, I know this has got to be a really big transition for you. You've been living in the house, haven't been paying rent. I appreciate all you've been doing for mom or dad or whoever, but it's time, you know, we need to sell this house at some point, but why don't we start with say, you know, three to six months. You know, I do need you to start paying rent to help cover the costs. We will still be having to pay property taxes, even if they're minimal. Let's just say, Hey, you can maybe stay the first three months, no rent for free, but then, you know, you have to start paying for something and that will help get you on your feet to get your next place or next situation or whatever. You just say no rent, but let's give them a time frame so that they can adjust to this thought. They can start getting their decks in a row. How much equity are they going to have? Will they be able to go purchase a house? with their equity or will they not have that much to purchase, but they could rent? Will they move out of Silicon Valley area somewhere less expensive to be able to buy? Give them that time. Most often when I have seen one of the siblings living in the house, honestly, they've been a freeloader for years. And yes, they may have been doing a really fantastic job caring for the parent. And even if it's just company for your parent, so give them that, appreciate them for that. Cause that isn't always easy, even though you might think, gosh, I've been working, paying my own mortgage. I had to pay for a house and you have some resentment build up, have some compassion for them, give them that time to adjust for the new decision. If they keep digging their heels in saying, no, I'm not going to do that. The next step is say, well, then you have to be paying market rent now. And let's just say they can afford that. They, they do want to afford that. Give them, let it go. Let it die down for a month or two. Make sure they're paying the rent and then go back and talk to them about it and say, Hey, you know, I've been, I thought I was okay with you staying here, paying the rent, but I have my own needs you know, give them a, a solid reason. Share why it's important to you to actually sell the house. And by giving them a little bit of time to settle down, um, they're dealing with the loss of your parent, just like you are. Sometimes they'll have a better view on the situation and feel like you're right. You know what? I could probably do a lot with that money and maybe I will be moving out of the area, whatever. But by letting the death settle a little bit, I've seen that work wonders. I had one situation, it was actually an ex-wife that had of one of the siblings who had been living in the house caring for the ill mother, she had cancer, and she even had a 16-year-old daughter. So her fear was, oh my gosh, you know, 
my ex-mother-in-law, who she adored, passed away. But now if I have to leave, I can't afford to live here. And she wasn't even getting money out of the house. Her ex-husband was. But she really wanted her daughter to be able to stay and finish school. So by us all pulling back, there were three siblings involved. And it was one of the siblings' son's ex-wife. So it was a little... It was a little dicey to be honest with you, but the attorney and I got together and we told the whole family, let's pull back. Let's give her just a little bit of time. She was paying rent, she had a job. But once we gave her that space, I think it was, I think it was about two months, they approached it again and said, look, we will help, we will give you extra time, but we need you to be on the same page that we're gonna be selling this house. And honestly, it went pretty smoothly. I think we had one or two more hiccups. So by giving people that space, it's huge. Okay, let's say you've given them some space, you go back and they're still digging their heels in. Ugh, that's not fun either. I've had this happen too. So, and, and I actually was dealing with the sister that was living in the house. She had lived there honestly her whole life. She was 62, she'd never paid rent. She had always been super close to both of her parents. The loss of her mom, her dad had passed, you know, 15 years before, but that loss, I mean, it was so hard for her. So she still really wasn't ready. So again, the attorney and I talked, I talked to, um, there was two other siblings in that situation too, another three siblings. And I said, why don't I look at, you know, what the equity she'll have out of the house? What could she go buy? You know, she really wanted to stay in the area. Um, she really wasn't going to have a lot of fun. So in her mind, well, she couldn't afford anything else. So where was she going to go? And how dare they all expect her to go live on the street after her whole life she's lived in this one house. So um, I actually found a really great 55 and older mobile home community. And she actually got really excited. She It never had dawned on her to even, she just thought there's no way she can afford. So. I guess my second step or second suggestion is, you know, come up with solutions to, to provide the person. Just don't keep drawing that hard line. You have to move out. We're selling the house. When people come at someone like that, they just put the brakes on and get more mad. So in this case, I luckily had a solution. She could afford it. We made it work. And honestly, she was super, super excited. She was sad, you know, the day that we moved her out, but the mobile home park was only a couple miles away. She could shop at the same grocery store, go to the same church, go to her same, you know, favorite coffee place, all those things. So providing a solution is fantastic to get them to see where they're going. So in my situation, I've never had to get past that. You know, I could say, I think the longest it's taken us, you know, myself and the other siblings to get that family member that's in the house to that point, I would say it's been about eight months. I know that might seem like a lot, but it's not too bad for a happy resolution, keeping the family, you know, all in good terms. I mean, people, these are your siblings, love them or not, that it's all you have. And, you know, sometimes it's just important to keep the peace a little bit. It can be bumpy along the way, but it was great in all these situations to really end peacefully get, we got great sale prices for all these houses. I try every, you know, I try so hard to make sure we can get top dollar for these house sales, especially when it's being split three, four, upwards of six ways. So I really try and get you the most money. But let's just say that that sibling, that loved one will not move out. And you get to that point and that sibling just won't agree. You've found solutions, you've tried to kill them with kindness, giving them time, you know, even letting them live rent free for a few months, but they're still not going. There is a legal option and you can force the issue. It can be costly, it can be time consuming, but one thing I will say, once that could be broached with your sibling that I hate to do this, but this is really important to me. I need my equity out. I, whatever your reasoning is that you need to sell that house. If you bring in this legal proceeding and they know how expensive it's going to be, and they're going to have to pay for an attorney to fight you. Or even if you have an attorney, just file all the paperwork, they're going to have to address every step of that process. And a lot of times that fear and that, fear of having to come out of 
pocket, which they may not have, will be enough to get them. Again, I've never gotten to that point. Um, it's a petition process, but again, the, the thought of that, we have definitely talked about it behind you know, closed doors with other siblings and the attorney, like I say, I work very closely with attorneys in situations like this. Uh, but you, you know, we've never had to force that issue, but I know that's there and that's a, our backup, our backstop essentially. So if you have any questions, if you're in a situation like this, honestly, I, I feel like I've heard so many crazy stories, even if I haven't been part of them, but I would love to kind of brainstorm with you what will help you in a situation like this. I just have lots of resources. Look around, feel free to reach out anytime. I do free consultations. And until next time, have a great one.